we're going to see is Orange versus Pavo. Aqua, who do you think is going to win this? It's quite a close one, I think. Pavel definitely coming into his prime uh, at the end of 2015. Orange, a more established player throughout all of 2015, but definitely finding a stronger consistency at the end and, of, of course, at the start of 2016. Uh, Orange is a player who still uses Hunter to this day. The deck, uh, the class I never thought would ever go away. But he doesn't have Hunter with him today, which is really surprising. He's brought a Rogue Druid Paladin. And Pavel, as you said, is more known for his control style. But that's a Zoo deck, if I believe so. So maybe he's uh, joined the dark side of the aggro players. Are you sure he brought Rogue? Is it, uh, isn't it Orange bringing Mage Druid Paladin? And Pavel bringing Mage Druid Warlock? Wow, has that changed? I got a different list here. Maybe. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see the deck list. But uh, for now, we see Druid versus Zoo. Uh, so that's... Oh, is it Zoo? Is it Zoo for sure? Pavel was mostly playing Reno Lock before, and he was really successful with the Reno Lock. So that would be interesting to see a mix-up. And uh, in fact, with Abusive, I think that's actually a Zoo from him. Yeah. Joining the dark side, as you said. Yep, you have to join the dark side of aggro sometimes, just to give it a try, right? Just see if you like it. <laughs> if you don't, go back to the light with Luke, and, and he'll help you out with those control decks. Light with Luke? Yeah, Mr. Skywalker, right? Is it like the, the Druid, uh, the Force class? Because... Oh yeah, I suppose so. The Force of, uh, force of Nature, right? <laughs> Kinda, but yeah, yeah I, I would say... Uh, Luke represents the light. Uh, Luke represents the control players. You know, they're the guys who work so hard to stay in the game against these aggro dark side guys. And then there is a but... secret paladin guy just cutting your hand and saying, I'm your father. Just... Yeah, not good, is it? Yeah, this stuff. All right, but it's a really good start for Pavel overall uh, against Druid. It's, it's a good matchup for him. But apart from that, being a good matchup is actually great. But uh, Orange is running the aggressive Druid, the face Druid. Maybe he feels that Hunter isn't quite up to scratch at the moment in the metagame, even though he's won a tournament this year with Hunter in his lineup and going for the aggro druid, which Chaki piloted during the preliminaries on the weekend and found success with. So maybe Orange has thought, you know what, that aggro druid looked pretty good. I'm going to go give it a whirl too. Um, he was actually playing it before in the, in the group stages and was able to, to advance with that druid as well. So he just um, assumed that, well, if it works there, it can work for the top 8 as well. And Pavel taking a very aggressive stance here, developing a strong board of minions. Swipe would be absolutely br brilliant here, but doesn't have access to it. And it looks like it's just going to be kind of a minion battle right now. It looks like he's going to try and force Orange to start trading first. Can and that only plays... In I think so. I think you would charge at this point. Get rid of the knife juggler. Oh, <laughs> unlucky. But again, Orange playing defensively and Pavel playing how he wants to play, which is aggressive. Yeah, so for now, Pavel is still in a, in a good shape, just uh, getting an, a, a good board and, you know, clearing what Orange has. Orange is playing an aggressive version, so if he has to go into defense, that would not be good for him. Where Pavel can just uh, start life tapping starting from next turn. Although Orange does have a uh, low feather available to him, so he can block out power of Wellmans. Uh, he could play Druid of the Claw if he's not afraid of Power of Overwhelming. Nice 4 6 taunt to kind of stop Pavel in his tracks. But I think I prefer the low feb here just to stop any kind of buffs from spells or an implosion. Uh, because you don't want to lose any more of your board at the moment. A low feb might just stick around long enough for you to kind of fight back. Well, if there is no Power of Overwhelming, it does stop this board as well. And uh, there is, in fact, none for now. Oh, well, Orange uh, took a little bit of a, not so much a risk, but he made a read there, and it did pay out for him, and now he has a 4-6 sitting around, which can maybe start leveraging things, but with two Imp Garam bosses and an Egg Down, uh, things are looking pretty tough for Orange. Absolutely. Uh, on Pavel's side, I think you might want to attack with an Iron Beagle to play around Swipe a bit, to, and, and just to cash in on the damage. Um, attack with Imp Gang was not necessarily, so just an attack with the Owl and pass it yeah, I agree. That was very nice of him. Keeper's not a bad pickup. Could silence the egg if he wants to. Uh, and that will make the egg uh, a little bit less effective. Uh, however, what else would you do with that? I mean, the Aspirant alone does present uh, a body, but not really a threat. Belcher? Uh, not Belcher. Shredder is fine as well, like with Aspirant. 
Yeah, that's true as well, yeah. Maybe the silence isn't needed just yet to get the Shredder down. So both the Shredder and the Bear now can contest these two in-game bosses. And right now, Pavel doesn't have an answer for this Bear without just slamming the two uh, bosses into it. Yeah, and suddenly Pavel is behind on board because those guys are pretty threatening. Like, he didn't find anything to boost the attack, even though he's playing a zoo. So no Dark Iron Dwarf, no Abusive, and no Defender of Argus to be able to, to deal with the 4-3. Um, no option to buff the egg as well, and uh, this is tough, like, you might want to go for the Flame Imp and maybe Brand to put the biggest amount of power on board, but there is a threat of a Savage Roll always, especially with the Aggro Druid. Man, I mean, that Druid of Claw has done so much work uh, without it, I don't think Orange would be in the situation he is now. I mean, Low Feb would have been fine as well, but stopping Pavel from attacking his face has slowed him down so much and now it's given Orange the opportunity to take the board back or go on the aggressive himself because he knows Pavel just can't deal with this Druid at the moment. Yeah, it's so crazy. And uh, Savage Roar is actually lethal uh, with Keeper of the Grove. If I if I count correctly, that would be 8 plus um, 10, 18, 20. No, one off. One off with the Savage Roar. Alright, so he goes for the kill. Just needs to get rid of this and uh, decrease the power of the passive capture a bit. That's not a way you want to lose your uh, imp gem bosses. You want them to get as much value as possible generating those one ones. But he was put in a situation, like you said, where Savage Roar would be lethal. So it was a big issue for Pavel there. And now Orange is kind of in the driver's seat here. He could play Combatant, Hero Power the Imp. Uh, he could ping and Keeper then play the, the Combatant. I think yeah, keep it. Keeper Imp and then Combatant will be the best. Yeah, that's another way you can do it and generate some most bodies on board. And now, <laughs> this is where the Druid starts to get out of control because he just has all these kind of powerhouse mid-range minions. And Pavel's still stuck with like one ones and spiders. Another spider shows up. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work for Pavel, but you got abusive at least. Uh, with Bran, it's plus four attack, so Nerubian Egg will be able to kill one of the targets being 5-4. He's getting a 4-4 himself and trying to get this board under control and suddenly orange has only six damage but oh the swipe is cr i was just thinking a swipe yeah. would be absolutely crazy right now Ouch. and yeah that could just seal the game for orange and you can just pop the spider just open clears. he just clears and that's just that's clears great. everything and he keeps his board around yeah which is oh man what a draw nothing dies he just clears everything and he's still healthy. Wow, okay, that that's uh, that's a big turn for, for Orange. And then what can even Pavel draw? Uh, most of the most of the Zulists they have reactive cards, cards like Gormok, like those boss like Defender of Argus. He will draw two cards, but still there is a little pressure and something like Force or Savage Roar can win the game right away. Oh, implosion is nice. Yeah, that's not bad, he's just seen a swipe. Doomguard the follow-up next turn as well. Uh, would have been nice if he could have had Doomguard and Implosion to play this turn, but it just wasn't possible. So Doomguard might be a card to help him get back in the game, but so much pressure coming from Orange at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Six damage, so he's down to six. And then with Leopard, no, he'll be down to four. And the four damage is mostly not a problem uh, for the Druid. Low fed lock sight, stuff like Power of Overwhelming, which would help him deal with the low feb, uh, does get a dark iron dwarf which is which is nice, he gets to play the doom guard, uh, clear everything down, so he leaves a 2-2 left on board, so now orange is the one looking for stuff to finish this game, force of nature would do it, swipe would do it as well, so yeah. another swipe comes off the top for orange and he takes the win. Those swipes were pretty good for orange, but everything comes down to the decision where he played Druid of the Claws taunt. And Pavel just uh, wasn't able to get anything to buff those minions and was just staying with his imp gang bosses. Uh, aside from Pavel, a visible sign because that was a good matchup. He had the great start, he just failed to draw anything in the mid game and gave the Druid a chance to come back. All he needed was one powerful Wellman, maybe an abusive sergeant, and that would have been enough. Yeah, a peddler, uh, those cards would have been enough to get him in that game and make it a little bit more even. Uh, because Orange was so far behind, but that Druid the Claw just changed everything, like you said. And he snagged the win there, and now Orange is 1-0 up 
going into the Rogue against the Druid. So Pavel again finds a decent matchup against the Rogue, but every Rogue player believes that they're favored, so perhaps Orange doesn't agree. Yeah, that's exactly a really interesting discussion there, because whoever you ask depends uh, what they play, and uh, you, you feel like Druid is favored versus Rogue? I think it's 50-50. Yeah, it probably uh, depends on the coin, right? Like, if Rogue gets the coin, it's uh, changing a bit in favor of Rogue, but well if Rogue doesn't have the coin, then... Uh, it maybe favors Druid a bit, so in the end it is a 50-50. And, you know, the Rogue needs stuff like Sap, and he's a good Sap target usually, um, or a big tempo swing with, say, Drake Prep Sap, Drake Prep Eviscerate. Um, you know, there's a lot of circumstances on both players that make the matchup more favored, but I think if you look at what they have to deal with each other's uh, options, I would say it's covered probably in the middle, 50-50. An interesting decision for Pavel here, how to use um, the ramp, how to use Innervate in coin. He can obviously go for Innervate into Shade, but then the next turn he will not have much to do. So maybe the better play will be to go Innervate into, Shre uh, into Shredder on turn 2, and then just play the Shade and keep the coin for a possible 5 drop. Uh, but he goes for this, um, well, tempo play kind of, with the Shade being played on turn 1. The one thing Shade on turn 1 does do is it can buff itself out of the range of Orange's AoE uh, if it's just left alone. I mean, Deadly Poison clears it up next turn uh, with a Blade Flurry, but that's a lot of investment, so uh, he might get some value in the long term from the Shade. Uh, and he does have it! He does have the ability to clear the Shade at this point, but if he doesn't take this opportunity now, that Shade might just grow out of control. Yeah, this is quite awkward, actually. <laughs> Do you even go for it? Um, versus Druid, you probably don't want to Deadly Poison Flurry, but uh, what is he going to do on turn 4? Like, even if he goes for Deadly Poison Blade Flurry here, he, he has, like, nothing in turn 4, so probably not going for for it on to kill the Shade. But next turn, Deadly Poison will be good, and he will have that Flurry open if he really needs uh, to do something about it. I guess the only problem is that uh, the Shade is now buffed out of range of just the poison, so he needs Tinkers um, and maybe some spell power to clear up later. I I'm curious to see how much influence this Shade sticking around has in the game in the long term. Well, now it's out of range, as you said, um, and he still doesn't really have a play either than, uh, other than Sap. Sapping Shredder is uh, a tempo play, but it doesn't do much uh, in the long run because the, sh the, the, the Shredder is just going to come back there. So um, if you play Azure Drake next turn into Shredder, well, you will have the backstab. So it might not be bad to just sap it here. Yeah, sap does kind of relieve the pressure. You know this shade isn't going to re reveal itself anytime soon. Uh, he could clear it with the weapon, hope he gets something with two health, and then backstabs it. But then again, backstab will probably find a lot more... Uh, power with Drake next turn, so he does replay the Shredder, he can then play Drake, backstab, and then have free attack uh, for whatever minion pops out, so I do like the sap here, but like you said, it just kind of just slows things down, it doesn't ultimately do a lot. Yeah, and the Shade is still growing uh, up, like, over the damage that can be dealt. So, um, Pavel is just steadily playing minions, and he's uh, he's alright with it, but uh, we will see what drops from that Shredder, because that will be the important part. Here he thinks about attacking or not attacking. If he attacks the Shade, well, it's a 5-5, five five, so it's still a bit out of range. A preparation would be amazing for Orange, but he didn't get it. Although he gets a clear here, he can uh, use the weapon on the Shredder, backstab the Shade, then he has a Blade Flurry to follow up. Uh, it might clear, <laughs> it depends if this is a mill house, so not a mill house. So we can clear the board here, so Orange does kind of slow the Druid down, and Pavel at the moment doesn't have anything amazing to play. He could ping with the Keeper on face and maybe develop the two 1-1s one with the Living Roots, so he does want to find like a Drake or something this turn, I think. Goes to the Wild Grove, so he def he wants to have the Ancient of Law next turn. Uh, but that's his kind of agenda there. Yeah, even though his board got cleared, Rogue had to spend some cards, so he knows that the poison is not there anymore, and uh, he hopes there is maybe no more AOE, or Rogue will be forced to clear those one ones with the weapon. Uh, you know, Orange might look alright for the moment, but he's getting lower and lower 
uh, in health, like he's going down to 18 and combo is combo is 14. So having that wild growth being played there, uh, where Pavel did it, gives him a chance to get to that combo a bit faster. And with the Ancient of Law picking up more cards, you might find the Savage Roll, maybe two with the Innovate. He doesn't find it, luckily for Orange. Uh, however, now Orange has to stay in a 5-5. Five -five. His health is not really a resource anymore. Like you said, he's just taken too much damage at this point. Uh, but he may feel he needs to use it. What could he do here? I mean, Blade Fur Flurry and Backstab. I guess that's probably his best play. With the Violet Teacher, will generate a nice board. What about what about the sap still? Uh, if you sap Ancient of Lore, uh, it can be replayed. But then uh, at least you you have the board. Oh, he's well, going he... for Flurry. All right. That's, that's yeah, with the spell power. The spell power will let him clear the board quite nicely here. And like I said, generate his own... Uh, steady board. Swipe does deal with the one ones and maybe the Drake, but that teacher might just stick around. Well, uh, still... unless he pl you can still Sorry. keep her though. Um, but uh, Pavel picked up Savage Roar. This means that he has the combo to finish the game off. And now just uh, he can keep her face. And this means he has the kill. And if this doesn't tell you he has combo, I don't know what does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, whoops, I misclicked. I, I I wanted to silence your teacher instead. And Orange is just going to have to play some guys down. Hope for the best here. Hope that Pavel did misclick and meant the silence. Well, we did that. see Pavel misclick at the European Championships. <laughs> Orange is just banking on that mistake to happen again. But I don't think that'll ever happen to Pavel again. I think he will learn from that. And he does find a win here. Tying the game at 1-1 against Orange. And, you know, this. I think we're in for a free two here. These guys are going to go back and forth. Absolutely. And, you know, like, you have to give it to Pavel. He's so young and already so good. And then his miss, his misclick at the European Championship, he was stressed. He was on the main stage. It was a different environment for him. Right now, he's in his room and, uh, you know, being chilled. Even though he's stressed, like, he's visibly stressed. Uh, not showing much emotions, but you can see him sighing or, like, being happy that he won the game. Um... But yeah, he has a lot of potential, so in the upcoming months or years, he might be, he already is one of the top players in the world, but he might be the best if he continues on this track. He's kind of like Europe's own Amnesiac. Like, yeah. America has kind of the young prodigy player of Amnesiac, and then we have Pavel. So I'd love to see a game of those two going like head to head. That would be brilliant. Like the two young superstars of Hearthstone at the moment. Uh, there is a cat! There is a cat. Mr. Mr. Biggles. All right. Oh, maybe it's a different creature. We can't quite see all of it just yet. Mr. Bigglesworth? Uh, Is that the Kofuzad's cat? Yeah, Mr. Bigglesworth, that's the one. <laughs> that definitely looks like a cat. <laughs> you right. never know what you could have as, as a pet, I guess. Are you saying Pavel is a Kofuzad in his younger form? Perhaps. Perhaps he will become a... What are they called, are they called in Warcraft? Are they Frost Liches? Just a lich, I guess. Is it just a lich in Warcraft 3? I can't remember. But yeah, maybe he has the potential of it. It's quite cold in Russia, right? Yeah, I guess it is. And he already has the cat, so... Um... And he loves control uh, control decks as well. Oh yeah, maybe he's got it that Calvazar's going to be cycled out. But how do you feel about this matchup? Rogue versus Zoo. How, how do you feel this is? I mean... I think it can be pretty 50-50 as well, depending on how strong the start is for the zoo. I think it swings even more with regards to who has the coin. Um, with the Druid versus Rogue, the coin uh, swings it slightly, but if um, Rogue has the coin versus zoo, it can put it heavily into Rogue's favor. And especially with this kind of hand from Orange, where he has almost everything he wants to, to clear the board. So uh, I would, at this at this point, I would put it in favor of Rogue, this for sure. I mean, look how much impact that coin had then. He was able to clear all of an egg. Um, implosion to come down here, and it doesn't clear the SI, so now Fan of Knives is just going to be absolutely brilliant. Going to clear it to the 1-1s, one and, and the SI is going to stick around. Maybe even get healed by Vars here in the following turns. Yeah, Orange definitely has possibilities, and uh, Pavel got uh, upset about the Implosion. Are you happy about Implosion rotating out? Um, I like Implosion as a card, but it's just a little bit too powerful in Zoo, I think. I like it kind of in the Arena Lock deck. Uh, it's quite a nice addition. But yeah, I don't mind it rotating out. Um, 
But I'm, I'm curious to see what other kind of demon interaction cards get printed in the next set. I think that will be a major impact on how Zoo might develop, or maybe even Reno Lot might develop. Yeah, that would be really cool to see a, a new breed of Zoo with cards like Nerubian Egg and Void Color uh, rotating out. But uh, looking at this board, it actually worked for Pavel because Orange used the AoE on only two imps, and now he is facing five of them. Pesky imps. Yeah, they cheated him. He was expecting only two on board, and suddenly they exploded. And now he just has to hope there's no abusive sergeant, no Pavel Lem to deal with this teacher. But as we can see, Pavel has a wealth of resources to be able to deal with anything that's dropped until Orange finds a removal uh, that he needs. I mean, he could double abusive here, just one imp, and still have all the other imps left. And then come in the following turns, he has Direwolf, Alpha, and uh, Arga. So uh, Orange could be in trouble unless he finds another fan or a Blade Flurry. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It, it looked great for Orange before, but after that fan of Knife's turn, which uh, was uh, in theory bad for Pavel, where he only got two imps, Suddenly, getting four imps from the second implosion actually turns around this game, and there is no flurry for Orange, so how do you come back from this if he's playing minions from behind? Like, you can't even really sap stuff. Like, sap doesn't work versus this deck. Sap that 1-1. One, one. Yeah, or Nerubian Egg, I don't know, man. It's, it's tough. And you got an Argus there, a Knife Juggler, so we can just play the two bodies down just before the Doomguard turn. And he can keep trading, which I would probably do against Oil Rogue just because of the swings they have with Oil. But how did, Orange is such in such a tight spot now. I don't know how he comes back. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Pavel knows how to play those decks. Pavel, Pavel will not give him a quarter at all. He just uh, will clear the board all the time and try to uh, set up a board uh, on, his, on his own. That is hard to AoE down. There is no flurry yet. If that, if there will be a flurry. At least he will be able to clear most of this. I actually... Yeah, and the, the thing is, uh, we were discussing Fan of Knives. Pavel's made his board state so that Fan of Knives is not even an out anymore. He needs Blade Flurry with a, a weapon buff. That's the only way he clears his whole board. So what can you do here? Like You could sprint into prep Fan of Knives, but that's not even an option anymore. Yeah, you might need to go for Shredder and uh, Sap. There's a flurry one card away. Oh, Backstab oh. can help him a bit. And the Prep Eviscerate can actually help him a lot. Oh my god, he actually got the cards he needed because with those cards, he might have just uh, just died with so much damage, but here he can at least get 7 damage off this board. Yeah, he's got some sustain here. Backstab, Prep, Evis on the 4 4. Next turn, a Doomgrow is going to come down. That is going to be another problem, but right now, I think Orange is not too. Uh... But no, I think he's pretty happy with what he found. I mean, what else could he... Yo, a lot, of other, a think, lot of other things would have been a problem. Yeah, that was probably one of the best options to draw. Like, you sprint, you have no mana, and you are still able to take 7 damage off the board. But now Lofeb is... yeah. Yeah, yeah Lofeb's probably gonna lock this game out. Oh, he Absolutely. could sap the Lofeb? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it, I guess. Yes. No. Just goes for the minions and hopes that there is no... Damage in hand of Pavel because he's 12 on board. But this time Pavel actually got cards that are not Haunted Creepers. Yep, he had a proper zoo hand this time and he takes the win, taking a 2 1 lead over Orange here, just as Mage left. Now, what do you expect from this Mage? Are we going to expect a Freeze Mage? Or do you think uh, he's going to follow Ecop and bring that Tempo Mage? Oh man, that's again tough because Pavel was playing a lot of Freeze Mage before and in the previous uh, the previous rounds he was really good with that Freeze Mage and having a lot of wins. But uh, because he swapped, as you said, from Reno to Zoo, I don't know anymore. And if he's targeting um, decks like Paladin, like Druid, I would not be surprised if he brings Tempo, but uh, it is in fact the Freeze Mage that uh, he's accustomed with. And we saw the Freeze Mage of Stan Sifka fall to Paladin when Oskaka was Paladin it. So, uh, although this is a bad matchup for Secret Paladin generally, it's not unwinnable, and especially with a hand like that. I mean, if he had a uh, an Avenge or something like that instead of a Comp Spirit, that would have been absolutely brutal. But Knife Juggler into Muster is a very nice start for Orange. 
Yeah, I agree. And also, um, even though it's a good ma matchup for the Freeze Mage, um, Pavel was playing a bit of a different version than Stan Sivka. Stan Sivka was playing the Reno, the Reno one with um, maybe a bit more variance with the benefit of having that a super heal uh, available for you. Uh, Pavel was playing more of a standard ve version, I believe. Uh, he might even have one Pyroblast, I think. Oh, potentially Malagos as well. We see Malagos kind of cycle in in a couple of decks. It's kind of you either play Malagos or you play Pyroblast. You either pick one or the other in kind of more standard food li mage lists. Yeah. Alright, so as you mentioned, Orange having a really good hand because he is able to put the pressure on Pavel early on. And uh, Pavel having a close Nova, but no Doomsayer yet. And uh, Ice Barrier is quite alright to stall a bit. Oh, there is a Doomsayer, so. He might be in a really good position next turn. Um, also blocking Lothab if he goes for the coin. Um, throws Nova Doomsayer on 4. And he picks up another Doomsayer as well. So he does have the AoE resources he needs to keep Orange at bay. And having the coin available to him uh, to be able to lock out this board next turn and clear it. Uh, we'll, we'll expend a lot of Orange's resources. Uh, what could Orange, do you think Orange can make a read on this now or does he just have to go on the aggressive? I think like most of the time when you're playing a bad matchup you just have to close your eyes and go for it. Especially if you have the power on board. Um, just put enough power. Next turn is turn 4. So the only thing that really stops you is the coin throws Nova Doomsayer. That will be super annoying for you. But uh, well, you do not play around that. You just go for face. I wonder if Orange is running an owl. An owl would definitely... Uh make this a lot more awkward for Pavel. Uh, doesn't find it unfortunately, so now uh, this is kind of a whiff turn for Orange, maybe just develop a dude, hope a knife hits face, take him down to 10. Uh, not much else he could do. If he had a Haunted Creeper, he could play a Haunted Creeper and get some value. Gonna develop the Redemption though, just to get a secret down. What would come back? The Juggler was played Juggler. first, yeah. So, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not bad actually. Uh, getting the one damage as well with the weapon, maybe hits with the rainforest, as you said. He did. So he's taking him down to 10 already, gets the juggler. The only issue here is the juggler can be pinged and easily. he can. <laughs> super easily. Is he going for another Doomsayer? Because if he is, I like that a lot. Yeah, that, that does stall a lot overall. So on nothing is going to get played this turn because there isn't. No reason to. There is no way to kill the Doomsayer as well from Orange's perspective. So Pavel is getting a free turn 6 where he can play Thorison on empty board. And he knows that with Thorison on empty board he is also in no threat of dying because Paladin will not be able to deal 9 damage if uh, Orange decides to attack this turn with a weapon. Orange's reaction then was brilliant. Just buried his uh, face in his hands. He, he knows how much of a big deal this is. He goes to the Sludge Belcher just to get a 1-2 down. Just some form of minion. Uh, maybe he's trying to bluff a uh, Blessing of Kings here. It uh, is reasonable that. and um, it might open a way for him, uh, but with 7 mana he should not be able to deal enough damage anyway. And that Torison, look at the hand of Pavel. He has the Flame Strike, he has the, the Secrets, he has Alexstrasza, so on, on 7 he can basically set up everything he wants, but uh, back to Orange. He has Lothab. Lothab is a big one here. What can you do as Pavel next turn? Can you play any secrets? For seven yes, you mana? can. Yes, you can. You can play one secret. So if he didn't get that Forison down, uh, he wouldn't have been able to play a secret. So an ice block. Is ice it safe enough to play a barrier? It should be. Um, well, it's it's actually risky if you go for the barrier. Uh, there are some nice flying, and there can be a true silver plus blessing of kings or double blessing of kings for the win. But on the other hand, can Orange test the secret? Yeah, he will be able to test the secret first because uh, he still can. Uh, if this if this is like an ice block, he can run his Lothab into Thorison. Uh, but that's that's unlikely overall. Uh, two cards in hand, one card being drawn, and eight mana for eight bursts from Paladin uh, would be tough. So the Ice Barrier is the better line of play here because he can't draw enough damage to kill Pavel at this point, as we know from his hand. Uh, even if he just threw, like you said, just one Blessing of Kings is not enough. Yeah, and it's unlikely, it's unlikely, but uh, it's possible if Orange would have um, already uh, four damage in his hand. Risky play, I guess, uh, but Pavel's going to be rewarded for it. 
Absolutely. Right now, with the barrier, he is safe, and uh, he can be even more safe next turn. He can just play Alex Traza and Ice Block, and then he has uh, Frostbolt and Pyroblast and Ice Lens. He knows Lothab is already up. Um, yeah, it, it, it seems like a win for Pavel, like, honestly, Aqua. I don't know what can what Orange can do here uh, to win this. Uh, yeah, he's just uh, been locked out. Like you said, uh, the Ice Barrier is enough to protect him this turn. Alex Ice Block next turn, so that gives him another turn where he can uh, not die. And then Orange has to deal with the Alex as well. So that's yeah, but he has 17 problem. damage in hand. Like, Pavel basically has Pyroblast, Frostbolt, and Ice Lens, which is 17. Um, and even with the True Silver Champion being played on Alex Straza turn, you can go up to 17 only. Yeah, it's looking pretty bleak then. I think uh, Orange Orange obviously doesn't know what's going on. We do, but he will just try his best. Leaving the Force alive, he knows that if he's going to win this game, he's going to need to do damage. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not looking good. So will Pavel go for that, or does he have a different line of play? That's an Ice Block, right? Yeah, so Ice Block into Alex Traza. A clean win. And um, if he thinks about... He might actually go for something else, like... But what is he even going for? Like, what, what does he need here? What is he afraid of? I'm not quite sure. It looks like he's going for a Flame Strike. Just to absolutely seal the deal. Yeah. Oh no, he's going for Alex Charles anyway. Sure, just I uh, wanted to see the secret. So now, Orange must not only pop the block, but he needs to clear Alex as well. And heal. Uh, and heal. <laughs> <laughs> over over 17. Yeah. But as far as he's... As, as far as Orange is concerned, he's probably hoping Pavel doesn't have... Burst. All this damage in his hand, so he's gonna play uh, this turn out like he, like Pavel doesn't have it, and just kind of hope for the best. So uh, how do you play this uh, this turn to uh, get everything you want? You can basically kill Alex Traza with um, like a dude attack. You can kill the uh, the two one with an attack as well, and then just uh, create a dude and, and pop the block. Hmm. I guess that's fine as well. Like whatever he whatever he does, pro it's probably okay to keep the um, shielded mini bot on board for a specific AOE card. Like you know that there's a flame strike, there's a chance that shielded mini bot can maybe survive. Yeah, you keep the more resilient minion here. Use the four uh, four three to clear that guy and pop the block with the mini bot. So if he does have if he doesn't have any damage, uh, he could potentially win next turn with the mini bot if he hasn't got no clears but as we know Pyroblast Frostbolt and Iceland will clear the game. Papa was smiling there for a moment like when he realized there's like nothing he was like oh you mortal creature you're trying to win versus mighty Kalthuzad. <laughs> Come here Mr. Bigglesworth let us celebrate. <laughs> All right, so Pablo's advancing today too uh, with a three-one score, and uh, is it is it the the biggest score we had? We had Oskaka win three-two versus Stansivka, right? E He's match of e cop three-one yeah. each. All right, all right, okay. But uh, still, a really interesting lineup, and I, I like the fact that he did switch his renal renal lock uh, for the zoo, so something different for the top eight, and a really nice match, well played by both players. I think Orange needed the power of Rexar to continue winning that game. Uh, you know, always very known for his Hunter play. I was very surprised not to see a Hunter from him, but it may be down to the G2 Class Legends tournament recently. We like solo played Hunter and didn't get very far, so maybe he's not got that much faith in the deck at the moment. But coming up now, we have Tice versus Sixo. Now this match should be pretty good, man. I mean, these two players are just so good, kind of in top form right now. Yeah, the, the king of the ladder, 6-0 versus European champion Thais. So that will be a great match to see. But for now, we're going to have a short break. Prepare the match for you guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back pretty soon. <laughs> 